Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, InsyaAllah in this uh, session, uh, we'll be discussing uh, the definite uh, integral. Okay, so let me just get the slides uh, on the screen. So, um, Okay. Yep, so this would be the uh, slides for the definite integral. Okay, so basically what we have done so far, we focus on antiderivatives and uh, uh, indefinite integral. So what we're going to do next is basically to look at this uh, concept of uh, definite integral where um, we can use this concept to basically find areas, uh, probabilities, average values of functions, um, future values of continuous income streams, and many other applications. Um, the relationship between uh, definite and indefinite integral uh, is not obvious, but we're going to discuss that in the next uh, subtopic. Okay, um, We're going to use this example of approximating areas uh, to introduce you to the concept of uh, definite integral because um, we can use uh, definite integral to basically find uh, areas, uh, find areas such as this one, the areas under this curve of fx uh, under this function, 0.25x squared plus 1, between x equals 1 and x equals 5. So we say we, this is the shaded region and we are interested to find the area. Okay, um, take note that since this is not, um, it's not square, it's not rectangle, it's not uh, triangle, we cannot uh, basically apply um, the um, the standard geometric area uh, width, uh, multiply with height or triangle, multiply by half and whatnot. So we cannot apply the standard geometric area. But we can use rectangle to estimate the area. So how do we make use of the rectangles? So the, the so, so let's say we uh, first uh, going to use this method of left sum. Okay, left sum. So let's say we want to use four rectangles. Okay, four rectangles because we have from, from one to five, there are basically, um, we have a subdivision of, a sub width of one each. So there are four sub width, okay? So this interval, if we were to divide into four equal parts, so the, the width of each uh, rectangle would be one, okay? So we're going to place the rectangle whose base is the sub interval, one, the width is one. And what about the height? The height will be the value of the function at the left end point on each of the four rectangles here. So this is the first rectangle. So the height of this rectangle will be the left end point here. So this would be the first rectangle. What about the second rectangle? It will be from, from, from 2 to 3. Okay? And it will be of this height. I'm going to use the left end point. So this is a rectangle 2, rectangle 3, and rectangle 4. Okay, And we can basically find the sum of R1 to R4. How do we do that? We simply take the the width which is this is one and then we multiply with the with the height so what is the height the height is simply f of one we simply substitute this value here and for rectangle two we substitute the value two here right and we can get the the sum okay so um, this would be the height okay how do we find the height we simply you simply substitute one into the original function and then multiply with the width so this is the width and this is the height so we use standard geometric to approximate the, 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 this area. However, take note that uh, by using the standard geometric, we are underestimating the area because this area, this, there are areas that are left, that, that are not taken into account. And because of that, the left sum, the left sum basically underestimate the area. So after we have done this, we have summed these four rectangles and let's say the size of the four rectangles, the sum is 11.5. We know the actual area will be greater than 11.5. Okay. And similarly, we can use the right sum. What would be the right sum? Now, we're still going to use four rectangles. However, the height of each of the rectangle, the height of each of the rectangle going to be the value uh, at the right end point. So, the first rectangle here, this will be the height. Okay. This will be the, the height. So, this will be the first rectangle. Second rectangle. So, take note. All the rectangle, we're going to use the right end point. So from R1 to R4, these are the right uh, rectangles and we can sum them up. So the width, each of the rectangles, their width will be 1, right? 1, 1, and 1. What about the height? So the height will be, we simply again substitute the, the right. So for this, for R1, you're going to substitute 
2 because the right end point of the rectangle 1 is 2. Okay. So for R4, substitute 5. Okay. To find the height of R4. So when doing so, let's say we have done that and the, the, the sum of the size of all the four rectangles is 17.5. And take note that when we use the right sum, we have overestimated the area because these areas, these areas are not part of, and are actually above the curve, above the function. And because of that, we have overestimated the, the area. So we know that the actual area will be smaller than 17.5. Now, by collecting this information, we know the actual area will be between 11.5 and 17.5. And this is based on our approximation of the area by using the left sum and the, the right sum. Okay. Now, these four rectangles are basically, um, you know, they are not that good. We can, we can make our estimation, our approximation to be better if we were to divide the interval into more subinterval. In other words, instead of using four rectangles, we divide it to eight rectangles. When we use eight rectangles, left and right, we're going to make our approximation to be better. Okay, as you can see, you should be able to see that our approximation has improved. So the lower limit, the, the left sum, instead of 11.5, when we use four rectangles, now when we use eight rectangles, it has gone up to 12.875. And similarly, for the right uh, um sum instead of 17.5 originally 17.5 when we use four rectangles now it has improved to 15.875 which have made our approximation to be better uh, more accurate okay more accurate now by using the same concept the spirit is that uh, we have to have more the more rectangles that we have the better approximation that we can make right the more because as you can see the the area that we underestimate or the area that we overestimate has become smaller, right? They have become smaller. So if we were to divide this into more, so 16 rectangles, we have improved our approximation uh, to 13.59 and 15.09. And if we were to have 200 rectangles, you should be able to see that our approximation has increased, has improved a lot. Okay, now the difference between the left and the right sums has become smaller, 14.25 and 14.39 so the actual area would lie in between these two uh, values okay so uh, since we have technology we have the i mean computers and, and 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 the technology calculators we can actually increase the number of rectangles that we use to approximate as much as possible okay now in doing approximation of course we cannot run away from error and we can measure the error okay can we measure the the, the error in approximation now, it is not possible to find the actual area, nor the actual error, but we can calculate the error bound or the limit, the greatest mistake or the greatest error, positive number, so that the error is guaranteed to be smaller than or equal to this error bound. So this would be the, the formula. Okay, this would be the formula. If we have two endpoints A and B, so now the error bound would be, we simply take the highest the height okay, of the rectangles, what is n? n is the number of rectangles that we have. Okay, n is the number of rectangles that we use to approximate. Okay, so this would be the height and this would be the, uh, the, the, the difference between a and b. Okay, a and b. Now, take note, as we increase the number of rectangles, as n becomes bigger and bigger, as n approaches to infinity, what would happen to this whole term? This whole term, the error bound would approach zero, which approach zero as this n becomes infinity, right? As n becomes infinity, so b a and this one, you know, f b minus f a, you know, this whole thing would basically approaches zero because we are dividing by a larger and larger number. So that's why our error bound will become smaller as we use more rectangles, okay? As we use more rectangles. And uh, at the same time, the left and right sum, the left and right sum would approach uh, the same number, okay? As we increase n to infinity, as we increase n to infinity, the sum, when we use the left sum and the right sum, so both of them going to approach basically the same constant, the same constant, let's say C, okay? The same constant C. 
Okay, so these are all uh, basically technical uh, uh, definition of this concept of how we approximate areas by using rectangles. This is pretty much related to uh, definite integrals. Okay, um, you can, I'm, I'm going to basically skip all this uh, because what's important to you is that you understand the concept uh, how we use uh, rectangles okay, to approximate the actual area. The more rectangles that we have, the better approximation that we can we can do okay now definite integral is basically the limit of the of the sum okay the limit of the sum that basically uh, uh, can can help us to identify the the actual uh, area uh, that we want to we want to find okay um till that i'm gonna first uh, stop here okay giving you uh, a little bit of time for you to um, try to uh, basically uh, digest uh, this uh, concept of uh, approximation, okay, this concept of um, approximation to find the, the area under the curve by using rectangles uh, because uh, later on we're going to apply the same concept when we uh, uh, discuss uh, definite integrals. Okay, so thank you for watching and uh, please uh, make sure you um, uh, understand this uh, concept uh, of uh, approximation uh, so that next we can uh, go straight uh, ahead into uh, the discussion on uh, definite uh, integral. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.